Hey, thanks for tuning in. You might have clicked on this video because like me, you're obsessed with getting good color in your images. And I'm gonna show you a really easy process in post-production on how to get a mathematically perfect exposure and a color balance, which is a great place to start. I think a lot of photographers, what they do is they just apply presets that they got somewhere, just expecting it to work out okay. And that's just not how it works. So I'm gonna show you how to get your image to a great neutral color balance, and then you can do your magic on them after that. It's my process, and that's what I'm gonna to show to you. Before we get started, don't forget that I have a weekly email newsletter. I send this out to thousands of photographers every week, just letting you know the gear I'm using, anything cool that's gonna be going on, and also upcoming speaking engagements where you can hang out and learn from me live. Like coming up in May, I will be speaking in Detroit, and you can get all the information on that in the description here, as well as a link to sign up for my email newsletter. So let's get into it. All right, now I'm in Capture One, and if it looks a little bit different than Capture One does to you when you open it, that's okay, I, I've created a custom workspace. One of my favorite things about this software is that you can move around everything you want to make it function better depending on what type of work you're doing and save it as a custom workspace. And so maybe I'll make a video on that another time. But right now I'm concerned about making sure that my exposure is correct. You can see that I've got a test shot here and it's got this Calibrite color checker in it. That's kind of my preferred because I like that it's got the light gray, it's got the darker gray, which is mid-tones, and the black plastic of the thing itself, which will represent the shadows. So this is gonna give me those three areas that I can adjust without having any bias towards what clothes they're wearing or anything like that. So in order to get your exposure, you really wanna highlight this darker gray. This darker gray is the exact gray of what represents mid-tones in an image. So this is gonna be a lot of skin tones are gonna to end up right here in this range. And also, if this gray is exposed properly, you know mathematically that your exposure is correct in a portrait like this. So what I'm gonna do is drag out the histogram, and this is gonna be a histogram with a red, green, blue, and RGB overlay. Now, because we know that this gray represents mid-tones, you can see on the histogram that this curve is too far to the left, which means the image is underexposed. So I'm going to increase the exposure until that gets to the middle of the histogram. So just, there we go, roughly, that's too much, there we go, right about there. Okay, right now I know that based on what's in this portrait and based on this color checker that my exposure is now mathematically correct. So let's take a look at what that looks like. I'm gonna undo this crop. And by the way, I'm cropping because you'll see that as I expand or contract the crop, that it's only gonna give you the histogram for what's inside the crop boundaries. And that's what makes this technique really, really useful. So let's go ahead and look at this image nice and big before and after. So here's before I adjusted the exposure and here's after. And now that we've adjusted the exposure, it's time to tweak the color balance. So I'm going to take this crop tool again, and I'm going to go in tight on all three areas of this color checker, including the light tone, which is going to represent highlights, the black plastic, which is going to represent our shadows, and the medium gray, which is going to represent our midtones. And you'll see all of those represented now in the histogram, one, two, three, right across the board. Shadows on the left, midtones in the middle, and highlights on the right. So it looks like our white balance is pretty close, but what I wanna do is to really concentrate on these highlights. And so let's go up here and make these highlights kind of our main focus. I'm gonna drag this histogram a little wider so we can really start to get fine tuning the distance between these things. And I'm gonna pull up the color balance tool. This is gonna give you like a color wheel where you can adjust the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights independently of each other. Not completely independently, think of it more like a rubber band, but uh, they will be mostly independent of each other. So now if I go to the highlights over here, you can see that the blue is far to the left. That means there's less blue and a lot more red and green. So in order to bring blue back in and get that neutral color balance, which means that those three red, green, and blue lines should be pretty much right on top of each other. So watch this. You take the highlights, and I'm going to just drag this center point towards blue, and you will see them start to line up. Bam. There we go. Now we have the highlights pretty much mathematically perfectly balanced. Now we do that to the mids. Looks like we're a little further forward on the blue and green, and we just need to bring the red channel up a little bit. So we'll bring the reds forward just a touch. There we go. There. Now I'm gonna go to the shadows, 
Shadows get a little bit dicier, but we're gonna we're gonna do our best. All right, because the shadows never never line up exactly perfect in my uh, in my practice here. But it looks like we could use a little more red and green. So I'm gonna push this a little bit towards red and green, and there we go. Everything should be lined up. And as long as the red, green, and blue lines on the front edge of those waves are lined up, your white balance should be pretty close to perfect. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Now we have the right exposure and we have the right color balance. Whew. Everything is now perfectly mathematically neutral, which I love. So if you've got other images, all you have to do is copy that setting and then apply it to the other images. And now all your images in that same set are going to be perfectly exposed and perfectly balanced. And it's at this point when you're at neutral, which is when you can start to do your color grade, when you can start to add your own style to it. But if you try to add that style and that polish to it before you get to neutral, you're gonna get really, really mixed results, especially if you're using some kind of presets or styles that you bought from someone else or got from somewhere else, because those are really based on having a good white balance before you apply them. They don't fix what you did wrong. So. Now at this point, because I've got a gazillion megapixels uh, on this X, uh, GFX 100S2 from Fujifilm, I'm going ahead and pick my crop and take a look there. And now I know, boom, we've got a ready uh, headshot that's ready for proofing. Now you may want to do more to this. You may want to do less. That's up to you. But here's what we have before and here's what we have after. You can really see the difference in the highlights that we've got a lot less green there. And I'm really, really happy with that. And I'd be happy to show that to a client. Now, if you want to take this to the next level, if you shoot tethered like me, you can make these adjustments and save them as a custom style and have that style applied on import, which means every time you take a picture, it's going to take that style and it's going to make that correction. So all your images are done as you shoot. And I've got a great video to show you exactly how to do that. And I will put a link to that in the comments. So hopefully this super nerdy method of getting a neutral white balance and exposure will really help you out in your post-processing workflow. Let me know in the comments if you've tried this, if it works for you, or uh, if you think I'm an absolute lunatic for even caring. <laughs> Either way, I'm glad to be back on YouTube. I really, really missed making these videos. Thanks for tuning in and all the information you need is gonna be in the description below. Like, subscribe, etc. And I'll see you later.